Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Skift Ideas podcast. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Colin Nagy, and today I'm joined by a hospitality legend, Liz Lambert. She's a partner at Lambert McGuire Design, a partner at MML Hospitality, and was the founder of Bunkhouse Group. She is a visionary hotelier, a designer, an innovator who has created some of the country's best and most interesting lifestyle hotels. Many of them are favorites of mine, and they're known for very distinctive design, uses of space, and integration with the community. So I'm super, super happy to have Liz with us today. Liz, uh, thank you for joining. Hi, Colin. So happy to be here. Cool. So I just wanted to tee off and kind of understand um, what you're working on lately. You you have your hand in many things, but just kind of set up the audience uh, with uh, with what you're working on. Oh, my God. So many things it does seem like these days. Uh, I've been really busy lately with uh, d- doing all kinds of different things. You know, we... When I joined MML here a couple of years ago, we did our first hotel together, the Hotel St. Vincent in New Orleans. And we, I, I'm continuing to work on that. We have a new general manager there. And um, it's, been, um, it's been really, really exciting to be in New Orleans and be doing a hotel that has so much, such a big food and beverage component. And it's one of those hotels I feel like just gets better and better the more layers we put on it the more it's one of, it's one of your more ambitious projects in terms of scale right i mean it's it's a large large undertaking i mean i remember i saw it in its earliest phases and i was kind of like stunned by how ambitious this was and, and so it's it has to be some learning experiences and what you've been doing there i mean i think so i think one of the things that's different for me is to be i have joined a company that is was a food and beverage company to begin with and uh and I brought the hotel division here to the company, but um, there, I mean, there's so much talent here in food and beverage, and so we have you know three three different uh, food concepts there. We've got I think three different bars the, with the pool bar and the chapel club and uh, paradise lounge, and so and we do a lot of music po- programming and a lot of programming in general with the community, and uh, so it's that that's a little bit of a departure for me just to be so uh food and beverage heavy and such a what such well done concepts and so yeah that's it's, it's super exciting um and you know it is as as all hotels are it is a, a work in progress always i'm always and i'm also working these days on el cosmico which i'm sure will delve into a lot. Um, we also have a couple of other hotels in development, um, the Mountain Chalet in Aspen, and we're working on a hotel as part of a bigger development here in Austin on West 6th Street in Blanco. Um, it is yet to have a name. It gets closer and closer, but uh, the hotel is part of a development that will also include residential, retail, and uh, a lot of restaurant on uh and it's, I think, 60, 60 rooms, right around 60 rooms. With a, our you goal. Goes, you, you've always told me that you, you wanted to do a, a ski hotel or a mountain hotel, so it's exciting to hear that that's happening, right? Like, what's that going to feel like? What's I mean, there's so much opportunity space for what you do in an alpine environment, right? Because either you have the glitz and glamour of a St. Regis or you have the sort of cheap and cheerful ski hotels, but it seems like there's room for a little bit more sensibility with, with that. So walk us through what the vision is there. Well, it, it's an existing hotel that's a fantastic place called the Mountain Chalet in Aspen. It's right across from uh, the rugby field there. It's, the rooms are a, a bit small, and so that as a, as a luxury hotel is um, could be challenging, I suppose. But I, I think luxury these days has – you know, has an ever-growing definition. And luxury doesn't just mean what I think we used to think it meant in, in hotels. I think now luxury can be um, personalized service. It can be a venture-based. Um, it, 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 we'll, have a, we'll have a bathhouse spa there. 
um, it in a ski town like Aspen and a mountain town like Aspen where the summer is so beautiful and the winter is so beautiful. There's almost endless opportunity to, to be a great concierge for the area. It is one of those rare mountain towns that people want to go to year round. And I would also imagine given the F and B tie in that you guys are going to try to push the envelope a little bit. Now there's, there's Clark's which exists in Aspen. And then, you know, how are you guys thinking about, um, this hotel in terms of F and B and it's fine if it's early, you know, no worries if the concept's not nailed down yet. Oh no, but you know how hotels develop. If we didn't have the concept nailed down by now, we'd be in serious trouble, right? <laughs> um, uh, we're planning on having a, a Jeffries there at the hotel. We'll also do a, a small sushi bar and we'll, we're going to have a restaurant that is uh, an Alpine restaurant, basically sort of modern Swiss, our take on modern Swiss, um, or on just Alpine Swiss. Uh, so those are the three main um, restaurant concepts. We'll also have a, a club up top called Ralph's that um, I'm really excited about. Cool. Well, one of the big things that I wanted to talk about today is how you're evolving El Cosmico. And, you know, El Cosmico has been a very interesting space, you know, Marfa, far west Texas. It kind of was the one of the most early incarnations of what we now call glamping, even though I think that that's a little bit of a, you know, uncouth word these days. But um, yeah, what is glamorous about camping? E exactly. Yeah. I mean, so you've put together beautiful like Airstream trailers. You put together this very kind of convivial environment and um, and now it's being evolved. So I want to I want to kind of talk a little bit about what's happening with El Cosmico and your partnership uh, with Bjork Angles. Great. I'm very excited to talk about that um, because I'm right in the middle of it uh, on a daily basis. Um, where do I start? Let's see. You know, I've always, I mean, for years and years and years, I have wanted to get a chance to expand um, El Cosmico as it is. And that's a little unfair to say because El Cosmico has always been a work in progress. I mean, it is a hotel that I've wholly owned um, from the beginning. And it was, I mean, a laboratory, an experiment, whatever you might want to call it, from the from the get-go meaning we started with a pasture and a couple of trailers um and i've tried different things on over the years a as we've grown we whatever money we've made we've always put back into um into the property and i th i guess like when we finally got to the point of you know enough trailers and tents to actually call it a hotel or actually open the doors and start having people in to, to stay from those early days on, I knew that we needed um, to have more rooms to really make the model work. And there was always more I wanted to do at El Cosmico. I really wanted a big spectacular pool. One that um, was part of the, part of the draw to come, you know, like camp out and have a bathhouse and a, and a opportunity to swim and lay under the stars next to the water. Um, we've always wanted a restaurant there. Uh, Marfa has been challenged over the years as to, it's a hard place to do business for, for lots of reasons. One is that it's a small town in far West Texas. And so we always wanted um, a restaurant at the property. And maybe most importantly, we wanted uh, a bigger opportunity to, to um, have workshops, whether they be um ceramics or uh, arts and crafts or welding or yoga. We've always wanted to do a, a bigger um, place that would feel a little bit more like adult summer camp. And so we were pretty challenged on the site we were on. So uh, I've, I've always, let's see, We've, we've wanted for years to do it, and I've tried to explore different ways to do it. Um, and I've kind of gotten to the point over the last couple of years that we knew we had to expand to make the business actually work in Marfa. 
And it was part of that exploration that led me to ICON and to Bjarke Ingels. Um, never, I didn't go out and pursue uh, Big or Bjarke or ICON for that matter. But when we sort of stumbled upon each other, it was a very, very happy meeting. So to, to add some context here, um, Bjarke Engels is the Danish kind of super visionary architect, and Icon is the Austin-based 3D printing company. And they've teamed up with you to create something particularly interesting, which is the natural, interesting evolution of El Cosmico that seems like it's something out of 2070, a futuristic, <laughs> uh, a futuristic vision. And first of all, what I think is important for, for our listeners to understand is the emotional resonance that West Texas has for you. So help, help us understand a little bit of that and then also you know, how that has informed where you're taking the new vision. Because this isn't some fly-by-night residential development. This is ambition that's also born out of love and understanding of a space. So I think that's what I want, to, want you to kind of explain to us a little bit more. Well, yeah, West Texas is where I'm from. Uh, you know, my family has ranched out there for generations, and um, I grew up in spending my summers in a town close to Marfa, about 20 miles away from Marfa, called Fort Davis. Um, and I moved to New York for a few years after I got out of law school and worked there as a lawyer. And when I came back, um, from New York, the first place I went was to far west Texas. Um, I redid a, a, a old ranch house we had out there probably in the late 90s, early 2000, late 90s. And so I've been spending time in Marfa particularly for a good part of my life. Um, I did a, after the first hotel I did uh, was a hotel on the South Congress called the San Jose. And the second hotel I did was a hotel on Marfa called the Thunderbird. My relationship with the Thunderbird didn't last for too long, but it was an experiment in what it meant to try to do a hotel out there. Um, that led me in the year or two after that to buy the land that El Cosmo goes on now. And that was probably around 2004 or so. And uh, so I've been experimenting with what it means to make a hotel in West Texas since then. And so much of El Cosmico is in its current form is really focused on, you know, the stars. It's, it's focused on the opportunity space. There's something very vast and open and creative. I think people feel different when they're there. Um, so well, I think that's West Texas in general. I mean, I think that that journey, you know, I think that's, for a lot of reasons. One, I mean, we have the myth of the American West, right? And so much of the, our imaginations that is captured by that is something that you can see through the movies. I, you know, Giant was was uh, filmed out there. No Country for All Men was filmed out there. There's something that is a is our American consciousness, and actually European too, it, it is. Uh, fascinated with that part of the country. And I think the really vast skies, the lack of, of people, the really dramatic um, geological formations. And I think it taps into this thing within all of us that is probably most about self-reliance. You know, I think of, uh, I think of all those Westerns and I think of, um, you know that the, the all of those ideas that have the the myth making around all of those things, but I also think for me one of the things that I first started looking to when I was thinking about El Cosmico was um, the whole Earth catalog, and I, their tagline uh, Stuart Brand created the whole Earth catalog. I think in the in the mid seventies, um, I could be wrong there, late seven mid seventies, early seventies, late sixties, as sort of an early internet. It was a big, big format catalog that pointed you to um, resources uh, to show you how to um, do all different kinds of things, 
um, whether it be uh, astrology or midwifery or, you know, leather crafting to you name it. I mean, it's like the, it's pretty, pretty vast. And I, I think a lot of that, the idea of the whole earth catalog was based on that Emersonian idea of self-reliance. And so I think that there's, you know, both the, the um, I, I think that there is a lot of draw of the idea of far West Texas when, or the, the West, the American West in general. And so there's something it taps into in, in, all, in all of us. What I like about this, as you're talking about the evolution, is um, Icon, which is the 3D printing company, uh, I, I believe you told me they have a contract now with NASA to develop things yeah. on the moon. So that is first, first West Texas and next the moon, which speaking, <laughs> speaking mean, of self-reliance, you know. <laughs> I know, I know somehow it's perfect. I mean, you know, because even though, you know, the idea of El Cosmico has a lot to do with, you know, tuning in and dropping out, you know, getting far away from the usual you know, plugged in selves that we are these days. I think there's still a, a, a lot about a, a a lot about it that is future thinking as well. And so, I think both. I think it's perfect that um, the company, the architect, and the and the building company that is has a contract with NASA to do the first dwelling on the moon and on Mars is also. Uh, building at El Cosmico. Now, because we're on a podcast, it's very difficult for people to kind of imagine what this is going to look like. So 3D printing is is a way of creating structures um, in a very futuristic way that is more environmentally, you know, sustainable. You don't have to bring in a bunch of trucks and a bunch of uh, disruptive machinery, but help people envision what this is going to look like, you know, um, the the aesthetic and everything like that. I don't think I could have even understood what 3D printing was, or I know I know I couldn't have. I didn't even know how to picture it until I actually met Jason Ballard and the folks from Icon and went and watched the printers at work. And what the printers are basically doing is putting down, laying down a bead at a time of a mix of dirt, water, and a binder that will then do the perimeter wall and some of the interior walls or the wall systems of a building and then they lay bead upon bead upon bead on top of one another until you have a completed wall system. Um, it's amazing to watch because what you're watching is uh, it, it doesn't care about how complicated the curves are or the machinations that the printer needs to go through. It's just taking information from the software and then creating whatever you've been able to draw on CAD. So you don't have any of the typical like architectural limitations in terms of building materials. This allows you to have more fluidity, more organic lines, and kind of be a little out there with it, right? By far. And it, it's, you know, it's, we've always wanted to do, it's, it's interesting because it, what it looks like once it's created, and if you could see some, you can actually go online, if you go to the Icon website, or I think also to the El Cosmica website, you can see some uh, renderings of some of the buildings, but it is very futuristic, but it's also very ancient. And if you think of ancient ways to build with mud and domes and, you know, things that were just built by hand without, uh, without lumber, without drywall, without, you know, sticks and bricks, and you you've freed yourself up from that that sort of building that's what you can get and now your relationship with big and working with you know such a such a visionary as mr ingles tell me about how that relationship has kind of gone together because i'm i actually think that you guys are kind of made for each other and i'm happy that you found each other but how is how does that creative relationship been working i mean it's been it's been thrilling. It's been a dream. It's not just Biarca. It is also his whole team. We've. Uh, I just came back from a trip to Marfa with uh, 
three of the architects from Big and a handful of uh, the folks from Icon and some I have some branding uh, I have some branding folks I work uh, with with a company called Souvenir and so we all, all went out there to do a camp out and kind of be on the new site and sleep under the stars except that it was really too hot to do that we opted for not camping at the last minute <laughs> and staying in the air conditioning at El Cosmico or places that have fans, but we spent a lot of time out on the site and it's, um, it's really freeing to be in a space where you're working with um, some creative professionals that are at the top of their field and also with a really new and growing technology that is um, not limited in lots of ways. Now, is the team from the States or do they come in from Copenhagen or further afield? Because it has to be fun for them to be seeing this land for the first time. Um, most, mostly the New York office. They have a pretty big office in New York that I've been uh, back and forth with. It's really funny when you go in the, you know, Big does uh, some really, you know, everything from skyscrapers to the Google headquarters to pavilions and museums. And when you go in, they've 3D printed some, uh, most of the build, they've 3D printed models for most of the buildings they've done. And you can see them all on one big table. And so, of course, there's these, there are these huge 3D printed um, skyscrapers, and down, then and they and they uh, go down in size as they, you know, they're they're arranged by size. So by the time you get to the ones in El Cosmico, they're like pencil erasers, you know. <laughs> I, I like it because the the <laughs> mock the mockups of this it's it looks like something from. Tatooine from Star Wars, you know, it looks like something completely, totally. uh, completely that feels organic and natural, but also something far flung in the future, which is, which is fun. And I, I like that you're alluding to ancient dwellings or people that solved difficult problems, you know, through organic materials and stuff, because there's a lot of ingenuity that comes from that type of building as well. It's so exciting. I mean, it's been, it's also been an exercise in opening your mind and trying to get rid of, you know, all these notions you have about hospitality or not about hospitality, but about a, a traditional hotel room in general. Now, with El Cosmico, community has been a huge part of the brand. You know, you do iconic events there, as you alluded to. I like the notion of adult summer camp where there's, you know, <laughs> learning new things and, and kind of stepping into beginner's mind, right. And getting out of perhaps your day-to-day -day life in a spreadsheet or in New York or Los Angeles. How is that notion of community going to pull through, uh, you know, as, as you develop the new concept? Well, I hope more than ever. I mean, what this does allow us to do, we've always been challenged at El Cosmico by our size, but we were only basically 40, 43 rooms, tents, a lot of that being tents that weren't conditioned, some tents that were, some that weren't. And by the way, I mean, we will have the new dwellings, which will be a variety of different domes and um, spiral buildings. But we will also have, we're, we're also going to bring over, we're, you know, we're moving to a new site, which is a bigger site, which is a longer story, but we're on it on 21 acres, right on the edge of Marfa, but we've, with a with a desire to expand uh, to more rooms, uh, we were challenged by the space we were in. We're also next to the border between the border patrol and the highway, and right to the south of sort of an area that has some more building going on. So. We finally decided to look for other sites, which was sort of mind bending on its own to think about moving a hotel. It's like, what? Like we can't move it. And then the more I started thinking about it, you know, it's it's based on the idea of uh, nomadic structures from the get go. So it's like, if we can't move this hotel, I don't know what hotel we can move. So basically we're moving about two miles away to the other side of Marfa, a little further outside of town and um, uh, we'll have 
more room, as I said, for uh, more gathering spaces. So we will ha- we're going to have a bathhouse in the pool that, it was, that I have always longed to um, make manifest. But we're also going to have a, um, a workshop studio. And, you know, over time, we, we're, hopefully we'll be able to do everything from the beginning. But um, some of this may take a while. Over time, we'll have gardening, greenhouse. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of things I want that I'm not even going to say out loud. I like yeah. the idea. I like the idea of like a creative village, and you know, I've, I've pointed out to you in the past, um, Potato Head, and like what they're doing there, because there's very interesting elements of you know agriculture. Um, they do a lot of stuff with like recycled ocean plastic, so it feels like the future of El Cosmogo can be a little bit of a, a playground and continue to be R and D for some of your other projects, because that's the exciting thing is you could, you could try stuff out here and then it's probably applicable to what you build in Aspen and what you build in other places over time. Right. I, and if it's not, we tried it, right. It's like, it does. I've always thought of it as a laboratory. Um, and, and that goes for, you know, building things that may not last or building things and, you know, and then um, packing in and packing out. You know, we do a music festival there every every September, and we the village grows really big. And then every, you know, it's like the circus has come to town, and then uh, and then it packs up and leaves. For a couple of years running, we actually did have a uh, a Ferris wheel, which I wish we could have all the time, but it doesn't seem to be the you know like it it doesn't seem seem to be in the cards to always have a ferris wheel i I like the notion of the expansion and contraction because you know in in some times of the season there's not as much there's not as many people coming to west texas perhaps when it's hot right honestly that was one of the reasons that el cosmico came into being like when i watched how how business how businesses struggled in marfa it was really like, you know, some weekends there were, you know, a thousand people in town for Chinati weekend or for um, the Marfa Lights Festival or, or whatever it might have been. And then there's other times that it's just completely crickets. And so having an ability to expand when there are when there's a big demand for it and being able to contract back in when there's not many people in town was an important part of the original concept. It also is a reason we always wanted a place where you could have camping because with, uh, with people being able to pitch their own tents out there, it meant that you, we could accommodate a lot more people. Yeah. And also just different experiences, right? They're the people that want to sleep under the stars and just have a little canvas between them. And then there's people that want something a little bit more cushy. So, um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, Liz, is just some of your inspirations. Um, the thing that I've always appreciated about the way you kind of design spaces is there's just a, a depth and almost like a subconscious pleasure to being in the space. You know, it feels like something is lived in and, and it, it has a thing that almost defies um, the logical. And so, you know, You've you've cited Christopher Alexander. You've cited um, some very interesting things in other interviews. But you know, what are you inspired by lately? You know, in terms of your designing, in terms of as, as you're building these new projects, um, you know, what's top of mind for you? Well, I will, I will say, like the new technology and emerging technology of three D printing has been really mind opening. Not just because, um. Not just because of the technology itself, but the process of thinking about how to build makes sort of a world open up that you are rethinking things. Um, you and I can say the normal things, which are very, very true, which is travel and looking at other projects and looking what other people are doing, or just going to a new place and a new, um, particularly travel outside of the U.S. to look at. Um, different ways of doing things and re you know, I'm, I, I do always um, consume different books and look online at, at, at things and, you know, 
travel in the mind as well. I like the the travel point because I think what happens to people within the hospitality industry or even just travelers is you can get in this locked groove oh, of, yeah. like, of certain things you like. Oh, I like my Hyatt points or, Oh, I like this certain <laughs> thing. And you know, you got, you got to break out of that in order to really see uh, what's going on. And, well, and I, I totally understand the desire for comfort and predictability and the things that you like hundred percent. But I think part of travel for me is work, meaning it's always part of exploration. And so uh, pushing to go to different places and to look at things in different ways is really important. And And collaboration, by the way, I mean, collaboration has been a huge part of what my life has grown into over, I don't know, the last many years. Um, It's always something I've been interested in. And, not, and it's always been something I've done, by the way. If you look back at the beginnings of El Cosmico, much of that happened with in collaboration with my friend Jack Sanders, who has a company called Design Build Adventure, and with a group of other people. I mentioned briefly, um, I have uh, the, the group Souvenir, which is uh, it, Isadora McKean and, and Landry Moore. And they both worked with me at Bunkhouse, but they – or do uh, branding and branding and a lot of culture and a, a lot of those things. But both of them have, have been instrumental in creating what El Cosmica looked and felt like and was all about, the pure definition of it. Um, but collaboration through my company, Far West, that does uh, creates retail goods for mainly for travel and for home. Um, from robes to leather goods to, you know, crossbody bags to top kits. Um, I'm doing a collaboration right now that's been kind of working for a while. I just got off the phone earlier with Natalie Channon of uh, Alabama Channon and Christina Kim of from DOSA. And we're uh, exploring how to use damaged out sheets from hotels and turn them into clothing, high-end clothing. Um, I've, do, I'm collaborating with Caddis Glasses on, you know, a, a, a pair of sunglasses. I've, like, it's there's all this fun with Saba, the company that does, you know, you know, probably the shoes, yeah. yeah, yeah. And we've collaborated on some some shoes in the past, and we're, we continue to do so. Um, it's just if when you start talking to other creative people or other people making things that opens up whole new worlds for you too. And it also gets you out of your regular way of looking at things. I I always appreciated that because when I would shop at the boutique at the St. Cecilia, um, it was, it was a worldview, right? It was a curation. It was a worldview. It wasn't just staying at a hotel. It was being exposed to different, you know, creators, different small um, craftsmen, and it actually told me a lot more about the hotel just through th- things like that. So that, that makes a lot of sense to me. And also what's fun is is I like the sort of Liz Lambert recommendations because, you know, in the FT weekend piece that you did a few weeks ago, I, I bought a pair of those Ranch Road boots that you were you were talking about. So the, the Liz's influencer effect is real, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really great to hear. The, the Ranch Road boots are amazing. Um, yeah. I could tell, I could give you a whole story about that, but um, no, I think it's, I think, you know, the opportunity to make a hotel store, I'd like to get the gift shop and the mini bar are two opportunities that hotels should grab onto to further tell the story of the, of, of the place and the brand. Absolutely. Like I, it makes me crazy to go into, well, you know, a lot of hotels, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if there is um, some M&Ms and a Milky Way, you know, and a Coca-Cola in your mini bar, and that's all. But there are hotels that you really want to see a, a better expression of, you know, the DNA of, of in the point of view of the hotel. I feel like it's a very good canary in the coal mine in a lot of ways. Like when you open up a, a mini bar and you see something inspired or you see something that's not your average Pringle, 
I'm like, okay, th- there was yeah. there was some intent that went into this. I thought about it, like if, yeah. and, you know, like if you should be thinking about the music you're hearing. You know, like again, the same playlist or a playlist. I was I was in a meeting earlier and I was saying, you know, remember that you know music can be the most inspiring thing and really put you in the place properly, or music has been used as torture. It can I mean, be. Like, it can snap you out of the trance. I mean, I think w- your partnership, I think it was Orchard, was it, w- in with some of the hotels in Austin. I remember hearing really great, you know, Rokey Erickson and, and great sort of psychedelic music at, at St. Cecilia and, and different twists down in, down in Baja, but like it's a real consideration. Oh, yeah, completely. I mean, I think most, most, uh, most inspiration for, uh, a brand or a particular hotel starts with ma- imagining the music that you hear there and the logo. What is that? What do you think like? about what, what do you think about the role of uh, of scent? Because that's another one that I feel like always has a very powerful connection with a place. Like, how do you think about that? It's huge. I mean, it's it's one of the like one of the considerations that in every hotel that I've ever been part of creating is, you know, what you're hearing, what you're smelling, what you're seeing, meaning like color or just vibe completely. And that, that, I mean, that's a place to completely begin. It's uh, scent is, you know, you hear, it is the, you know, Proust and the Madeline. It is, was that taste? That was taste, not sense, wasn't it? That's okay. There's probably the scent of a metal in as well. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I, it's like it, it can make, take you back to a memory so quickly. And just uh, so, you know, yeah, the Saints, so you talked about that, that the scent there is Nag Champa very much on purpose because, it, you know, the whole experience is supposed to elicit, you know, sort of a decadent, uh, elegant hippie experience, right? Um, so, I have so many nice memories of that hotel. Like I love how the the there's a the fireplace is burnt in, and I can't remember the name of the gentleman, but you know I was there at the bar, and then I came back a year and a half later, and he basically just knew exactly what I was drinking, like on the top of the, off the top of his head, like it was nothing. And I was like, this is something else. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Well, cool. Liz, thank you so much for joining us. We covered a lot of ground and I think that, you know, everyone listening will be inspired and find their own pockets of things to kind of dig in and go deeper with, but um, can't thank you enough for joining us and and kind of sharing a little bit of your worldview and what you're working on lately. So thank you. Always a pleasure, Colin. And, you know, I've been a big fan of Skiff for a a long time. I think um, it does, you guys do such a great job. Uh, and so serve such a, a, a great service for the whole industry and people that are interested in it. Cool. Well, thank you so much for saying that. And uh, we'll talk soon. Appreciate okay. it. All right. Take care, Colin. Join us for future Skift Ideas podcasts as we speak with the most creative and forward-thinking innovators in travel. As always, go to skift.com to stay up to date on the latest news and insights across the travel industry. 